In this video, we will discuss the problem longest subarray with sum divisible by k. Previously, this problem has been asked in Microsoft. The problem says that we'll be given an array which will consist of n integers and the integers can be either positive or negative and will be given a positive value k. We have to find the length of the longest subarray with the sum of elements divisible by the given value k. So let us take this example. Let's say we have 2, 7, 6, 1, 4 and 5. So if we have been given the array as 2, 7, 6 and then 1, 4 and 5. So in this particular array, we can see that this particular in this particular array, we can see that this particular subarray that is uh, having containing the element 7, 6, 1 and 4. If we find the sum of these elements, sum will be what? Uh, this till here the sum will be 13, then 14 and 14 plus 4, 18. So in this case, you can see that if the k value is given as 3, so 18 is divisible by 3 and that is the length of the longest subarray which is divisible by k. So in this case, how can we find this? So the first approach that comes to our mind is that we can see that from the starting from the from the beginning index of the array till some point we can say that if the remainder uh, if the sum if whatever the sum we calculate if that particular sum start like that is the prefix sum from the starting till some particular index if that sum is divisible by k then the array then the subarray is divisible right but how to find the intermediate so first of all let us try and see like what will happen so let's take the prefix uh, let's let us take the prefix sum so let's say we have the array given and let's try to take the prefix sum so till here the prefix sum will be 2 till this index the prefix sum will be 9 uh, at the next index the prefix sum will be nothing but 15 at the next index the prefix sum will be 16 at the next index the prefix sum will be 20 at the next index the prefix sum will be 25 now you can easily observe that there are two indexes uh, like if I uh, mark the value so 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 so we can observe that the at the, at the index i is equal to 1 I can see that what uh, the sum is equal to 9 and when I do 9 mod 3 so I get nothing but 0 so 9 is the sum till here that is 2 plus 7 this subarray is uh, 2 and 7 this particular subarray starting from here this subarray is divisible right so I can say that uh, the sum is 9 and 9 mod 3 is equal equal to 0 right so that's divisible now in this case if you see that i is equal to 1 so what is the length of the subarray so length of the subarray since it is uh, since from the starting I found some sum and the this uh, remainder the remainder is nothing but zero for this particular sum when you modulo it by bit k so in that case you can say that the length till ith index since we are taking uh, i is equal to one so that means the length is here two so you can say that what will be the length Len length will be nothing but i plus one right now for this case if you consider for this case that is when uh, you have the sum as 15 so it is at the index i is equal to two so what is the length the length of it is nothing but three elements right so you can say two plus seven plus six that's coming out to be nothing but 15 and 15 mod three is also equal to zero this is also divisible right so that's why you'll say that the length is i plus one that is nothing but three here so this can be the case right that is from the starting you find some of the some sub arrays that are divisible by k but does that always happen no because you can observe that some intermediate at some intermediate positions as well you can find it now let us try and understand like what will happen so if we uh, simultaneously if we make a remainder uh, remain if we keep a track of the remainders where remainder is equal to nothing but if we try to find the remainders remainder is equal to nothing but some modulo k right so if we try to find the remainders so here the remainder will be 2 till this index the remainder will be 0 here the remainder will be 0 uh, at 16 the remainder will be what 1 at 20 the remainder will be nothing but 20 modulo k that is that will give you like 20 is what 20 is nothing but 6 into 3 plus 2 so the remainder comes out to be 2 right when divided by 3 so in that case you will write that the remainder is nothing but 2 till here and here the remainder will be 1 right so you can observe that some of the remainders are also repeating right now what does it mean that this remainder is repeating and this remainder is also repeating so is there some indication that the remainders are repeating yes there is a there is an indication now if you see that what happens when the remainders are uh, repeating so can i say that suppose that the sum uh, sum is stored right suppose that the sum till here is someone right suppose that the sum till here was someone right suppose that the sum till here was someone that is this sum is equal to 2 right Sub sum 1 is 2 and sum 2 is 20 right and here the sum till here was sum 2 right so in this case what i can say is that what is 20 20 is nothing but what 6 into 3 uh, or i can uh, specifically say th 6 into 3 plus the remainder right plus the remainder plus some remainder that is nothing but plus 2 right that is how you can de derive it and what is 2 2 is nothing but uh, 2 is nothing but 0 into 3 plus 2 right how that is how you can derive it so that is why what i can say is that you will if you write sum 2 as p into k plus uh, remainder p into k plus remainder and if you write the sum sum uh, 1 as nothing but q into k plus the remainder 
right where the remainder values are same where rem and rem are equal are having the same values for this expression like so in this case if you try to subtract these two values right if you try to subtract these two so what do you get sum 2 minus uh, sum 1 is equal to nothing but p into k minus q into k right p into k minus q into k and if you try to take the common so that's nothing but p minus uh, q into k so you can see that there is an expression k here so that's why it will be divisible by k because this remainder remainder will get cancelled to from each other right so that's how you can see like because if if in this case if you see so what is someone someone some two is coming out to be 20 and the someone is coming out to be what someone is coming out to be two so if you subtract these two you will get you'll get the sum as 18 now when you when you get this value as 18 so you can easily observe right the value 18 is what 18 is nothing but it is divisible by 13 direct right it is divisible by 3 18 is, is divisible by the value k that's given to you that is nothing but 13 so that's how you can identify it that whenever the remainders are same so you can write every sum as what you can write every sum as the as a multiple as as a multiple of k plus some remainder right you can write every particular prefix sum as what you can write every particular prefix sum as the uh, uh, product product uh, as a product p into k as p into k plus the plus some remainder right as a multiple of some number into k plus the remainder so you can say that if someone and some two are two such numbers so in that case if you subtract them that, that are having the same remainders if you subtract them so they will have k expression common in them and you can see that in 18 that is nothing but 20 minus 2 that is 18 18 you can see that 6 into 3 is there so a k fa factor is multiplied right so that's why you can say that it will be divisible so whenever the remainders are also repeating in that case also you can say that the answer is possible right and in that this case you can see that at this index like till this index like you can see 7 till 14 this particular sub array is having the uh, sum that is 18 and that is divisible by k right so now you will say that how to find the longest length you you are saying that there are two parts either either i i can happen that uh, the length would be i plus one so i'll always keep a track of the minimum of uh, maximum obviously so either i can have the i plus one right either i can have i plus one as my uh, as my length or what i can have is, is suppose that if if i am storing in a map if i am storing the indexes so i can say that till the ith index if i am at the ith index so in the map suppose that i have already stored the previous location of the remainder so i minus remainder can also be one of the candidates right but is it always going to be optimal no because what you need to think is suppose that uh, like how will you store it actually in the map so let's say the remainder like i'm talking about the remainder right i'm talking about the remainder so suppose i find remainder 2 at three particular indexes let's suppose that i find it as at i is equal to 3 i find it at i is equal to 5 i find it at i is equal to 7 so suppose i'm at this remainder right suppose that i find this remainder so i'll say that in the map in the map i'll say that in map in place of this in map of remainder i'll say that the index will be 3 right so index will be i here i can say right in this part like i can say that this will be there so i can say initially that map of uh, 3 uh, map of 2 will be nothing but 3 right i can say that map of 2 like remainder 2 is equal to it is at the index 3 right i can say this thing but uh, like will i update it every time because i can say that when i was at 5 so i can say that the sub array length will be 2 right 5 minus 3 will be 2 i can say that i minus i minus map of uh, remainder like i minus map of remainder will be the length it will be 2 but should i update it once again because when i see when i see that remainder 2 is repeating here again so i want to find the longest length so i can say that i should store every time i should store in the map i should store the very first occurrence of that particular uh, remainder right i can say that i should store the very first occurrence because if i store this if i store the next occurrence if i update it after i move to this so if i update this if i say that map of uh, map of 2 is equal to 5 if i update it to this index then this will be the length whereas actually i could have got a better length with this part right i could have got a better length with this part so that is why if it is not if the particular remainder is not found in the map in that case i can say that i'll store its very first occurrence and i'll never update the very first occurrence because i want the leftmost leftmost index at which it occurs first so that with the current with respect to the current index i can find the with respect to the current index i at which it is this particular remainder is repeating i can find the maximum length always right so i can say that I'll do what I'll say that map of remainder is equal to nothing but I whenever it is stored for the first time whenever if it is not stored in the map so I'll store it for the first time and I'll say that what map of 2 uh, is equal to nothing but 3 and then when I come to this index 7 so I'll say that answer will be nothing but maximum of mx comma I minus map of nothing but uh, map of nothing but the remainder right so that's nothing but what 7 the index will be 7 minus 3 so the length will be 4 right so that's how I'm, I'm going to find right now after this part is done so one more thing will be there the thing is that you will say that okay this part is done that's how we can implement it but there is one more ca that there is one more edge case that we need to consider so suppose that after like suppose that the elements are given as two 
then it is given as minus 3 it is given let's say as minus 10 suppose this is uh, some array that's been given to you or let's say if it has been given as plus so let's say we have been given like this so sum till here will be 2 sum till here will be 5 and the sum like this is the sum this is the array that's been given so sum till here will be what sum sum will be minus 5 so now at some point what can happen is suppose you have been given some k value and you want to check so in this case you can see that there is a negative value right so whenever you have a sum as negative whenever you have the sum as negative and you do sum modulo remainder so in that case what happens is remainder also becomes negative right so remainder also becomes negative so in that case it will be difficult for you to keep a track so what you can do is if the remainder becomes negative in that case you can add k to it whenever you uh, add k to, rem to, to the remainder it will become positive right so remainder plus is equal to k whenever you do this thing and then you can follow your process right every time whenever the remainder becomes negative so you can add k to it so that it becomes positive and you can always keep a track of it normally now let us try and implement this code so what i will be having is i'll i'll require int sum i'll have the int sum that will that i'll mark as zero right that will tell me about the prefix sum i'll have a remainder i'll have a mx that will be marked as zero i also need an unordered map or a, um, or a map basically a hash map kind of thing so that i can store the i can store the occur i can store the very first occurrence of the remainder in the array right after this part what i'll say is that i need to start my iteration for int i starts from zero i is going to be lesser than n then i plus plus and what i will say is that what is the sum so sum uh, sum plus is equal to nothing but rfi i'll add the current element to my sum and i'll calculate the remainder remainder is equal to nothing but sum modulo k right so in this part as i mentioned earlier as well that the case one will be whenever my remainder itself becomes zero so i can say that the sub array till the ith index is 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 the sub array whose sum of all the elements is divisible by k in that case i can say that the length of that particular sub array will be i plus one so i can say that the maximum length will be nothing but maximum of mx comma what maximum of mx comma i plus one because that will be the length if a particular array at the 8th index is becoming is uh, giving the remainder as zero then the length of that particular sub array will be i plus one and otherwise i need to check that if the remainder becomes negative right if the remainder is negative then i can say that remainder plus is equal to k right so i'll add k to the remainder so that it becomes positive and i'll say that if map dot find if map dot find the remainder if i am finding the remainder in the map and it's not equal to map dot n so if it is already present in the map right so in that case if it is already present in the map then it will not point to the end of the map in that case i can say that what will be the maximum length maximum length will be nothing but maximum of mx right comma comma i minus map of the remainder right the very first index at at which the remainder for was found that will be indicated by map of remainder right after this part if it is coming in the map for the first time if it is not initialized in the map then i'll say that map of remainder is equal to i so the very first leftmost index at which i see it i'll initialize it to it that value and i can say that in the end after i have traversed so i can simply return the maximum length of the subarray which is divisible by k let us try and submit this code uh, compile this code to see if it works on the sample so we can, are getting the expected output on the samples if we submit this code it should get accepted so you can see that our solution was able to pass all the test cases and previously this problem has been asked in microsoft so in case if you did understand the solution make sure to hit the like button and comment down understood as well thank you for watching this video